Hi, I'm Scott Hamilton, Rockfile, back with another podcast review for your ears. Going to be talking about, well, I'll just say episode one of the new Kung Fu TV series. Now, let me start by saying, if you are a young adult, primarily female, and like a lot of shows on the CW, this show will probably be fine for you. You can tune out of this, go check it out. You will probably enjoy it. Heavy doses of melodrama, some good action. The fight scenes are well choreographed. There you go. You know, you don't need to listen to any more. You would probably enjoy the TV series. Women kicking butt. I, I love that. I was made that comment to a friend of mine recently. I just, you know, from... uh from movies like Alita Battle Angel or Atomic Blonde, I, I, I just, I really do enjoy the genre, and it's not really a genre on its own, but women kicking ass. I think it's great. Um, I love Deadpool. I love John Wick. You know, I, I like a good action movie. Um, watching the recent Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard, it was fun to see Selma Hayek kicking some ass in those two movies. So nothing against the whole, let's reimagine a series, do some female leads and that kind of thing. I th That's not a bad idea if you can pull it off. I grew up with Kung Fu. My dad liked it. Um, there is a behind the scenes story that Bruce Lee was actually supposed to star in it and it didn't happen because they didn't want an Asian lead or whatever and they got David Carradine. But this was still a show that I grew up with as a small kid who thought it was kind of cool. And if you don't know the premise, the idea of Kung Fu was that a Shaolin monk came to America in the times of the Old West to search for his long lost brother. And he dealt with, you know, racism and stereotypes and all this kind of stuff and, and basically kicked a whole bunch of people's butts with his bare feet. And, you know, it's a show that's, but I like the flashbacks to when he was learning when he was a child and snatched the pebble from my hand and all that kind of stuff. That stuff was great. The original, one of the original producers, Ed Spielman, who did the original show, is on this new CW show. He's one of the producers. I don't know what he did. I, I, <laughs> I don't see his influence anywhere. What happens was I was watching uh, HBO Max to watch uh, Reminiscence, and afterwards I had a little time, and, and it recommended you might like this, I guess because I finished the Warrior TV series. Now, when I looked up some information about this Kung Fu series, you know, it's one of the few American network dramas to feature a predominantly Asian American cast, including. And I'm like, did nobody see Warrior? It's actually based on the writings of Bruce Lee and actually deals with a lot of topics they would probably like to deal with in a show like this in a mature and adult way. And it's got some great action and things like that. But no, not many people talk about that show for some reason. And it's really good. So I knew I, it was not too long ago that I saw this pop up that they had made one and, and that it had a female star. And I went, OK, well, at some point I will check it out. Well, last night was the point. And and I put the, the episode on when I was doing some other things. I, I do a little bit of work late at night on my websites and stuff to get that uploaded uh, so it's ready for the next morning and things. And so I had it on. And I, I would watch it, especially during the fight scenes. And Olivia Liang, who stars in the show, did some great training. Her fight scenes are great. I don't know, but all but one in the pilot are in the dark for absolutely no reason. I mean, they could have been much better filmed. But you can see she does know how to fight. She's big enough, tall enough, and and choreographed enough so it looks like her punches and kicks carry power. Um, there's no, not too much wire work, but a little bit of, oh, well, that's, that kind of defies physics a little bit, but okay. Um, even though she makes a joke about that, it's physics, come on. Um, but overall, the show has absolutely nothing to do with the original Kung Fu. And yes, I know the original Kung Fu was like 1972, 73, you know, it was a long time ago. I get that. But in the nineties, they made a Kung Fu, the legend continues TV series where David Carradine returned playing an old, like the, the grandson of an old Shaolin monk. And they, they kind of went through some of the same things, uh, except this was a modern police drama. It didn't really work, but it was on for four seasons. I never saw it. I, I don't know why. I just I just never watched it. So I had hopes that, wow, this could be really good. 
uh, you got a female lead. Maybe, you know, she was raised in a martial arts family and she comes to America to find a brother or sister. That would be, I, I would be interested in she fights racism and all that kind of stuff. I'd be totally into it. That is not what the show is about. You have a young girl who's basically had three years of martial arts training and she is the baddest ass on the show. She was raised by a domineering mother who kind of forced her to do things. So she's all angsty and I never got to live my own life and make my own choices kind of thing. Um, that is probably very popular with the young people of today. But so she, she takes off and goes to a Shaolin temple and, and trains for three years and then comes back. Her hair is fully grown out because they, they, I don't know why they didn't shave their heads. That's kind of what Shaolin monks do. Um, but she comes back and has a few fight scenes and then deals with an ex-boyfriend, deals with a family situation, deals with another family situation, deals with somebody else. It's like, wow, this is a lot of melodrama to get to the rest of the action. And there were quite a few action scenes in the pilot episode. I mean, really. One of them is in broad daylight. It's a great fight scene. Um, she does great. Her partner in crime uh, does great. Um, it's well choreographed. It looks like they're actually fighting. Pretty impressed. You know, that was great. The other fight scenes are in the dark and not well lit at all. You can barely see what's going on. And I don't know, maybe it was the first episode and they didn't want to showcase her yet. Maybe keep some of it in the shadows so we'd be more impressed when we saw her later. But for me, it was like, that's really dark. And I'm watching on a pretty decent TV. Um there was just no reason for it. And the fact that the entire show is skewed towards this young adult, I'm trying to rectify my life with my old friends, family, boyfriends, whatever. That, that part just bored me to tears. And like I said at the beginning, if you're a young adult who, who loves the CW series that, that really get into the drama of these situations, you might really like the show. The action was good. The, the acting for what I saw and what appeared to be pretty darn good, uh, at what it is, but I, I didn't care about why after three years would you try and kind of reconcile with your ex-boyfriend? Why even bother? It's been three years. You're now this martial arts superstar kind of thing. And she's kind of downplaying it when her friends see her fight and everything. Um, like I said, the the woman who stars in it is great. Everybody else that I saw in the, in the debut episode were great. Um, Christina M. Kim is the showrunner and executive producer of the show. She cut her teeth on shows like Lost. She knows what she's doing, I would assume. Um, and a few other shows. Um, you also had, well, she also worked on Hawaii Five O and NCIS Los Angeles, which I've never seen. I did see the first NCIS a little bit. And, and again, to go back to some of my previous things I've said in podcasts, I don't really watch much network TV any, uh, hardly at all, uh, ever anymore. I got out of the habit when I was younger, just due to my radio career. And these days I prefer the shows that are on the cable networks, uh, whether it be Amazon or HBO or, or Netflix or whatever, because they're just, produce more like movies um, and, and for a more adult audience, I guess, because they, you know, they tend to go into the mature type situations. Uh, Ed Spielman, who I mentioned before, was a creator of the original series, is listed as, um, you know, a producer on the show. But I think what it really falls to is Greg Berlanti. And if you don't know that name, he is a very, very, very successful producer, and he's even directed. He directed Love, Simon a few years ago, which is a great romantic comedy. Um, Time Magazine last year called him one of the most 100 influential people of 2020, that kind of thing. But he's known for working on Dawson's Creek, Brothers and Sisters, Riverdale, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, the more kid-friendly versions of the Arrowverse and Titansverse if you're getting where I'm heading with this. For a 49-year-old dude, he's really in touch with what young people like. He's had a lot of success with shows aimed at a younger audience. Um, made a great movie that was aimed at a younger audience. I get all that. Um, it's amazing somebody of his age is that in touch with what young people love. But the stuff he did in the Arrowverse is what made me leave the Arrowverse. I haven't even watched any of the Titan shows. I... Didn't get past the first episode of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Um, never was a Dawson's Creek fan. It's just not my kind of television. Network TV is not really my kind of television. So again, preface everything I've said with, well, I like those shows. Then you might like Kung Fu. 
but they made this show in name as as most Hollywood properties want to do these days to have some familiarity. And I don't understand 50 years later why they're trying to tie into a TV series from the early 70s and have some familiarity. Um, they could have just called it something else and made her her own thing. And it would have been fine. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't have too many negative things to say about it, just that it's not my cup of tea. But when you use the name of something that's famous, that's in pop culture, no matter how old it is, you are going to have some people go, Why? You know, especially since this has no connective tissue whatsoever to Kwai Chang Kane or anything that came in those previous series. It's just called Kung Fu for whatever reason. And to have a young female who's only trained for three years in Kung Fu be a badass against some of these bigger and more well-known. There's there's a lot of those famous stunt actors you've seen in every martial arts movie in this, and she handily kicks their butts. As someone who took martial arts for over three years, I am in no way anywhere near, you know, even if I was a a prodigy of martial arts, would I be able to keep up with some of these famous martial artists who have, you know, 25, 30 years of experience. And don't get me wrong. I understand the young female empowerment uh, fantasy, whatever that's going on here. I, I do get it, but it's not believable. Um, there's most of the good reviews on Google that I looked up come from young females and a few Asians who say it's really not bad. It plays out kind of like a fortune cookie, kind of like um, a, a Cliff Notes version of, of some. But they don't hate it from that aspect that it doesn't. It's not uh, uh, bowing down to Asian culture and dumbing it down for us American audiences. Great, you know, but. Again, you called the show Kung Fu. First of all, you don't really have a Kung Fu master. You have a girl who's been doing it for three years. Um, and it doesn't have anything to do with the original show. Anything at all. So I wonder. What was... I don't have an answer. It's Hollywood. This is set up for exactly what people complain about. You know? That, oh, they reimagined this old show with a female lead and it's just nothing like it. That This is the common complaint. Why does Hollywood keep doing this? If you have an original idea, which this is mostly an original idea, call it something else. You know, I, there was absolutely no need to tie this into it. Critical response, I'm not the only one. It's... It, The ratings went down by episode by episode, and I think it's right around 48% or something on IMDb. I don't know what the Rotten Tomatoes score is, but I can't watch it past the first episode. It's just not anything that keeps my attention. There's a mystical element to anything in the original show was kind of hinted at, although in the late run of the show, it got a little bit more mystical, but... It's really unnecessary, but I guess they're trying to compete with Marvel stuff and and superhero stuff that's on these networks, perhaps. I I don't really know what the thought process was behind, we're going to make a new Kung Fu show, but this should not have been called Kung Fu. And when you look it up on Wikipedia, it says preceded by Kung Fu the movie, Kung Fu the Next Generation, Kung Fu the Legend Continues, and Kung Fu the original 1972 TV series. For me, it doesn't have anything to do with Kung Fu. I, I I like the lead. I'm glad she looks good in the fight scenes. Like, she's really kicking ass and all that. But that being said, if you're looking for a Kung Fu show, go watch Warrior. It's, 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 it's just much more of what you expect this to be. This is very much a young adult drama with some martial arts thrown in. Martial arts are really good, actually. I got to say that. They, they pulled off the choreography well. She looks good. Uh, doing what she does and defeating these guys that she would have no chance in real life defeating. Um, They make it realistic on that. When they get into some of the Chinese mythology and stuff and they go to this hand-drawn artwork that looks like um, Chinese art, um, it's great. I mean, they've really done a few good things with it, but it took me so many different melodrama ticks in the debut episode that I'm like, I don't care what happens with any of these other characters. I want to see her get the bad guy and the the, the person who killed her priest and that kind of thing, her uh, Sifu. So anyway... 
I don't want to just bash it to bash it. It just, it's not what, just don't call it Kung Fu and I would have been fine with it. But you called it Kung Fu. I have to compare it to the Kung Fu that came before and that it's not. But as a young adult drama on CW and HBO Max, if you're into those kind of things, you'll probably like it because it's a well done one of those. I'm Scott Hamilton. I'm Rockfile. TheRockfile.com is my website. Please like, share, subscribe, and thank you so much for listening. <laughs>